Hi, everyone. Welcome to the UVM Extension New Farmer Project webinar, What Are Lenders Looking For? I'm Jesse Schmidt, and I work for the UVM Extension New Farmer Project. I'll be moderating this session. Our presenter today is Vanessa Phelps, Loan and Outreach Coordinator for the CARET Project, a nonprofit offering financing and assistance to both farms and food enterprises in the Northeast. Originally a fruit and vegetable farmer herself, uh, she has a decade of experience farming in New England. Um, welcome, Vanessa. Great. Thank you, Jesse. I'm happy to be here. Can everybody hear me okay? Will you just type in the chat box again just to make sure that just as well as when I'm talking, Jesse's talking, that you can hear me too? You sound great. great. Okay. Um, so in thinking about my topic for today, the, the thing that kept coming to mind is how financing builds farmer capacity and how we see that in our work. So I want to kind of keep that as a theme as we move through the sessions and touch on that. I'd like to get a sense of uh, who is in the room today. So could you guys try and use that little um, A that Jesse pointed out where under the moderator uh, heading in participants, you can see the A, B, C, D option if you click on it. Let us know where you're from. I know we got some information on the first slide, but we didn't get everybody. So for people who are just joining us, if you look in the participants box, um, you'll see uh, some little icons and uh, there should be a letter A there. If you click on that, you'll have a whole list of options um, to be able to answer uh, this question. And if, it's, if you're F other, um, type it in the chat box because there's no F choice. Great. Okay, so we got a few answers there. A couple of Vermonters, New York, Massachusetts. Great. Great. Okay, and how many years old is your operation? Or if you're farming for someone else, I'd like to know that too. Or just thinking about farming. See a few answers coming in. So one, five to ten years. If you're thinking about farming, oh, more five to ten years. Great. Okay. Okay, and I'm curious. Who has borrowed for their business before? So if you could just type yes or no in the chat box for this one. <laughs> Great. So a few yeses, one yes, and a few noes. Great. Okay. So I wanted to give you a little bit of background about the CARET project and who we are and what we do. Um, we are a, a nonprofit lender based in the Northeast. And we try to offer flexible loan terms, financial literacy training, individual support, small loan sizes, uh, and work generally with small businesses, both farms and other types of value-added businesses. So a major thing that we do is offer business technical assistance. Most of the technical assistance we offer uh, is geared towards financing or financing literacy or things that might help you prepare to borrow or to think about whether or not it's a good time for you to borrow and evaluate your options for growing your business. We also have four loan programs operating in the Northeast. Generally, and it varies a little bit from program to program, but generally we offer capital or operating loans between five and seventy-five thousand, and the interest rate varies per program. Um, and again, we work with all different types of farms, 
uh, fishery businesses, and any type of food enterprise, so processing, distribution, storage. Um, and our four funds are based regionally, so Maine, Vermont, Massachusetts, and the Greater Berkshires, which also covers some of the Hudson Valley. Um, I want to make sure we have time for questions uh, repeatedly throughout the presentation. So if anyone has any questions at this time about our CARE project programs or something you want to know more about, um, you could type that in the chat box. Great. Okay. So here's just some clients that we work with. A lot of these are in Vermont, so some of you Vermonters might recognize them. Um, these are some of our, our past loans and technical assistance clients. And then characteristics and types of businesses that we've worked with in the past. Um, this gives you an idea of who we're serving as an organization. We serve a pretty diverse group of clients. Um, we tend to serve a lot of farmers or entrepreneurs that are thinking of something out of the box um, and they're maybe looking to go with a non-traditional lender because they want to kind of explain the details of their business that might be unique or a new idea um, versus something that has clear kind of path for it. Here's an example um, of a farm we worked with both on technical assistance and a loan and helped them uh, gain their first financing option. So, Bob Hill Farm is in Ashfield, Massachusetts. Uh, it's owned by Kate Caravan. That's a picture that you see of Kate there. And she has uh, berry products, but her main products are value added. And she has a, a line of kind of cordials that you can mix to make drinks or sauces. Um, and they're very good. So things like rhubarb brush is an example of one of her products. Um, and when we started working with her, she was kind of in the startup phase. She had test marketed her products and developed them at a um, food venture center uh, near where she lived in Massachusetts. But she hadn't been um, selling them for very long and she needed some working capital and to kind of scale up uh, to make it her full-time income. And so this is looking at over the work we did with her. We did some cash flow planning and then we eventually made a loan to her. Um, this is the changes that she saw in her farm capacity based on doing that planning work and then uh, going into business in her, in her first few years. So FTE and PTE, if anyone doesn't know what that is, that's full-time employees and part-time employees. So some key points that I want to make sure to cover. Uh, in this presentation, when's a good time to borrow, how could borrowing help you, and what are lenders looking for. So first key point, use the funds. What are you going to use the loan for? Uh, generally, an easy thing to make a loan for is for equipment because the equipment can often serve as its own collateral, or if your business is clearly growing um, and on an upward trend, it's going to be easier to borrow. Some things that are perceived as higher risk from the lender's perspective, startups or working capital or re refinancing. We do fund startups. Uh, we fund businesses that are literally in their first year and don't have any sales record yet. But I would say that that is fairly rare among lenders and that is a niche that we serve, especially in Vermont, um, where there are Quite a few other agricultural lenders that are great to work with. Um, I would say more so than in some of the other states we work. Um, you guys are lucky there. But we do find that startups often still have trouble figuring out where to borrow from day one if they do need some capital at the beginning. Um, and that is something that, that we offer. And in terms of working capital, that can be easier to get if you are combining it maybe with some other financing or you have some other collateral available. But often the, one of the issues with looking for working capital is, is what you might use as collateral. So next key point, collateral. What can I use collateral for? When do I need it? What is it? 
So collateral is an asset pledged as security for a loan. Um, so if you're borrowing for equipment, the equipment would serve as collateral for the loan, and maybe you also have some other equipment that you could also add to that collateral. Generally, examples of strong collateral would be land, equipment, vehicles, and livestock. Um, we do take livestock as collateral. Um, most other agricultural lenders will take livestock as collateral. Generally, cows are most common, and sometimes uh, sheep and goats and pigs, but cows are the most common. And some lenders will take uh, crops as collateral. FSA will take crops as collateral. We generally don't take crops as collateral. Um, but that would be more common specifically among agricultural lenders and not among uh, general regular banks. And then things that are less value as, valuable as collateral, some things that are really valuable on the farm, but they might be harder for a lender to resell if they needed to. So greenhouses, irrigation, fencing, uh, crops. So a key point here, skin in the game, the lender wants to know that you've put your all into the business. Maybe you've put in cash into the business as well. Um, and then once you've made that investment, you're looking also for the lender to put in, but you're, you're looking to match your investment. So they want to see that you have some kind of skin in the game, that you have either put in cash or sweat equity or both. Um, they want to see that when you make profits, you're continuing to invest some of those profits back into the business and grow the business and build equity. They want to see that you're working towards building up positive net worth um, so that your business is worth more, you're worth more than you owe in debt. Um, and they want to see that you're maintaining good working capital on your own and understand your working capital needs um, and hopefully that you have cash available for current projects. I would say Generally, of the borrowers that we work with, they often do not have cash available for current projects, but um, that's something we're able to work with. But often, if you're going to a more tra traditional lender, they're going to want to see that you ha are also putting in some cash for this project that you're asking them for money for. So application documents. Um, lenders are going to ask for things maybe in different forms or in different order, but generally these are the things that you're going to want to have in order to apply. Oh, I see we have a question. Um, so Lori asked how much cash. So Lori, I'm assuming you're asking how much cash are lenders, are, going back to the last slide, how much cash would they want you to put in? Like is there a, a, a percentage of cash that the lender would want you to see contribute to a project. That's going to vary depending on um, what type of loan you're looking for and what the, what the loan purpose is. So, you know, maybe if you, um, just for example, bought a tractor and it was $10,000, maybe you put a down payment of $2,000 on that tractor. Um, if you get a loan for, say you get a loan to purchase land, depending on what lender you use and what program it is, you know, it could be anything from you might get almost a, you know, 5% down payment loan from FSA under certain programs, or you might work up to, a, if you get a traditional commercial loan for commercial property that you may need to put up to 40% down. So it's really going to depend on the loan purpose um, and what you're looking to use the loan for. And so you can find a lender that is probably willing to work with you for 100% financing on certain things and in certain situations and in other situations you're um, going to need to put in some of your own cash. So that's maybe going to determine your direction with the project. Great. Okay, so moving forward again, um, what documents do I need ready? Um, cash flow projections at the top of the list because it really is the most important for us and I think for a lot of other lenders too. Um, and that's the one that, you know, you would want to do at the time that you are looking to borrow. You would want to make some current cash flow projections that include the borrowing and the project that you're wanting to borrow for and to, to show to the lender that you have enough working capital that you can uh, pay back on the loan that you're asking for and that your business is sort of the track that you're looking to grow your business with in this, for this project. So how does the project impact your business? Uh, you're borrowing for something that 
is a good purpose and it's going to help you increase your efficiency or increase your sales, you want to be able to show that in your cash flow projection. Typically, we ask for monthly cash flow projections for, uh, for 12 months. Um, so you would, you would do monthly, January, February, et cetera, for 12 months from when you, the loan was dispersed, dispersed or expected to be dispersed through um, maybe the rest of that year. And then you might show yearly, just yearly summary cash flow projections after that. Um, so you can show how you're projecting your growth. Um, historic profit and loss, so very similar to a cash flow projection, but just showing your historic profit and loss instead of your projected cash flow. Similar information on both of those, but the formatting is a little bit different. And uh, we don't require that, obviously, if it's a new business, but generally you want to have maybe three years of historic profit and loss available. Um, for your lender because they're going to want to show that you have had the cash flow in the past that proves that you can uh, pay on the, the loan that you're asking for. So tax returns, a balance sheet, um, personal financial statement, so you're, that's where you put your personal assets, and then a, um, a business plan. And sometimes, so the sometimes on the business plan, we usually require a business plan. It doesn't need to be very long um, or very expensive extensive. Uh, the marketing section is really important to us and just having a general overview um, of the business and your products. But if it's for an existing operation where you have historicals and you're kind of looking to borrow for your existing operation, we don't require a business plan if you don't have one already. Um, but most of the borrowers that we work with are looking to borrow for a new operation or for some uh, new piece of their operation. And so in that case, we usually want to see that laid out in a cash flow plan and a business plan because it's, there aren't historicals to go on, so you're basically explaining what you want to do by including that information in the business plan and the cash flow plan. Um, and then maintaining a list of collateral and farm assets, so that would just help you when you go to talk about collateral with your lender, you can keep track of what you have and have it updated. Um, and I see Jesse has posted some resources about financial planning tools and documents for on the UVM website. So that's great, Jesse. Thank you. Okay, so are there any questions on that section that folks would like answered now? Something to clarify about the loan process or what's required? Okay, we'll go forward. So um, lenders often talk about the five C's. And for the CARAT project, this is sort of the how we think about the five C's. And each lender, depending on how they make their borrowing decisions, is going to look at these things differently. Um, cash flow is definitely the primary thing for us. So we are looking at. Uh, at exactly what we were talking before, we're looking at the cash flow projections that you have made and showing that your current cash flow is good, hopefully that your historical cash flow is good, and that the cash flow that you're projecting for the project that you want to borrow for is good. Um, we would definitely want to know that you know your market, and we want to know that you kind of understand as a manager um, your business very well and that you understand what skills you have, and maybe also what skills you're weak in, that's important as well, and that you understand how to kind of cover all the skills within your business that you, that you will need to go forward. So the primary fact, those would be the primary factors, and we call them primary factors because they can make a break or deal for us. So those are the things we consider strong indicators of potential success. Um, if the applicant can't meet the primary factors, then we're not really looking at the secondary factors. The secondary factors are um, important, but the, the, but the primary factors need to be there first in an application before we will um, continue. So we lend basically on the strength of that farmer's business and their skills and the, the strength of their presentation of, of their idea and their cash flow. So then we would look at what kind of cash 
um, or equity they have in the business and what kind of collateral they have available, but we wouldn't look at those things and determine the loan on them until, until we really understand the business first. Okay, so I see Jesse asked a question. What do you consider trusted information sources for startup market sales product projections in their cash flow? So that's a good question. So where can you look to find um, information for your particular business if you are starting a new enterprise and you want to kind of get benchmarks or um, ideas of, of what the of what the costs of running that business are going to be to put in your cash flow. Um, that's really going to depend, I think, also on the type of enterprise and on your situation. Hopefully you've worked in a similar business before or maybe have mentors that you can ask to help you benchmark some things. Um, I know in our work, either I kind of rely on my own experience, if it's, an, if it's a business type of business that I've worked in before um, and can help a farmer come up with those, those benchmarks, and if it's a business that uh, I haven't worked in personally before, a subset of agriculture, then I would definitely try to talk with other farmers who have really similar businesses. Um, maybe, maybe if they're a mentor of yours or you can reach out to them to get them to kind of talk over some key numbers with you and figure out if you're off in any of your estimates, because that's going to make or break your success too. It'll help you to show to the lender that you've thought about your business costs, but it also is going to indicate your success, so it's worth spending time on. You know, for, we, we know for certain types of, types of agriculture, there's obviously benchmarks out there, um, and for other things that are a newer idea, you're, you're, you're going to have to come up with the numbers yourself. And so I would say the best trusted source really is um, just doing your own homework about what things will cost and then checking in with folks that have other similar businesses. Uh, and then, you know, you can talk to us about those things as well. We work with a lot of different kind of businesses, so if you're thinking of borrowing or looking at a new idea, I would definitely um, consider calling, up, calling us at the Carrot Project and asking us if we can look over your cash flows because we've also seen a bunch of different kinds of small diversified businesses, and so we have an idea um, of what those cash, what those businesses look like. Um, because we are specifically working with agricultural businesses. So sorry, I don't have like a particular source, Jesse, to answer that question because I think where I go to personally really depends on um, on the business itself. But um, so it would depend on the type of business. So if anyone has a particular type of business that they're looking for information for for their cash flow, um, you could take that type of enterprise that you're in in the in the box too. Maybe I can come up with a more specific recommendation. Okay. We talked about each of these things. So key point, credit reporting. Um, people always ask this, what kind of credit score do I need and how does my lender use my credit report? So how your lender uses your credit report and what credit score you need is going to vary from lender to lender. Um, we definitely use a credit check to determine that a potential borrower does not have outstanding debt that they are behind on or have defaulted on. So we would look at the credit report and say, is this person current on all their other obligations? Um, and that's basically the sum of how we use it. We try not to have a minimum credit score for any of our programs, although some of the, our lending partners that we work with um, in different programs do have a minimum that we try to work around. But in general, we do not have a minimum. Um, I find that most lenders do have a minimum of some type or they have a range that they're looking for, which you can certainly ask them, but, it's, but where you fall in that range and how, how that affects your loan is also going to depend on your whole package. So they'll look at that range and then they'll look at your whole package. Um, in general, I would say, you know, if you want to borrow from farm credit, you're probably looking at wanting a credit score over um, 700 to start with, or else it's, it's going to be a little bit more challenging to borrow there. And if you're uh, thinking of borrowing from more alternative sources, your credit score could probably be in the 600. So always remember to check your credit before you visit your lender. You want to stay up on your own credit if you're thinking of borrowing and just make sure that there's no mistakes on your report. Um, if the lender has something on your report that they don't like, you can ask them for a copy. Uh, see if you can make a correction to it. 
You can also, often your lender will, will ask you for a letter to explain something on your credit report. That's fairly common if there's anything that they want clarification on. So you could uh, it, describe in that letter, for example, you know, I, I lost my job between this period and this period, and I fell behind on this payment as it's reflected on the credit report, um, but now it's up to date. And so your, letter, your, your lender just might ask for documentation about some of those things. Okay, are there any questions about credit before we go on? And then I see Jesse has another question too. Or no, you're just saying that men yes, mentors are a great idea. Great. Okay, so key point, this is kind of a summary point, but often what lenders are really looking for is to see that your business has capacity for growth. And that's definitely something that we are looking for as a lender in that we are often working with businesses that are really young. Um, and that's not exclusively who we work for with, but it is a big part of our clientele. So a business that um, is in its maybe its first season or maybe seasons one through ten, that's a common business for us to work for work with. So we want to know that that business kind of has its bases covered and it has potential for growth. So what are the things that we would look at to see if there's that capacity, um, that the entrepreneur is open to learning, that they kind of understand where they want to learn and grow in their business and they're exploring. That is a really strong characteristic that lenders look for, um, that the entrepreneur is willing to feedback, uh, willing to accept feedback is another way to look at that. Um, they definitely want the entrepreneur to take suggestions that they get from their lender or TA provider. If, if the entrepreneur kind of has blinders on to any suggestions, that's a kind of a red flag to a lender. Um, that the entrepreneur can build on, its, on their strengths, recognize personal weaknesses and respond. Um, that they have a clear set of expectations or goals, especially around borrowing you want to have a goal for why you're borrowing. I really want to increase efficiency in this part of my operation, so I want to borrow towards that um, and that it's worth it to me to take on that debt and I know what I'm going to realize as a result of that borrowing um, is a good place to be in in terms of decision making around borrowing. Um, a willingness to change course if you find something isn't working and then also to be able to explain that to your lender. So to say, well, we tried this, and we lost money in this year, but then we found that didn't work and that we're, we're going to correct it or we did correct it and this was the result um, of the changes we made. That's an important story to probably be able to tell about a challenge that you face in your business at some point to your lender. Um, realistic projections. And so especially if you have a unique, uh, a unique business, you're going to need probably to be able to explain your projections and your business plan to your lender because if your lender hasn't looked uh, specifically at a business exactly like yours before and your business is unique, it, the onus is on you to be able to show that those projections are realistic. So you want to make them clear and you want to have notes and assumptions that, that show how you came up with them um, and that is an important thing to convey. Um, so that you do your homework, that you get back to your lender, that you provide information that they ask for um, and that you also Obviously, you've done your homework around, around borrowing and understand um, your borrowing situation. And that you understand the strengths and weaknesses of your plan. So what are the things you can anticipate and what are things that, you know, might be weaknesses or unknowns? Okay. Um, I want to ask some questions. In some of these cases, there's no right answer, but I want to get a sense um, from folks of where they are on these topics. So. What's a good time to borrow? And you can use that ABCDE uh, that we used before and answer. We've got a couple to go through. Okay, I see a D. I see an E. Great. Two answers so far. Still a lot of D's and E's, so that's great. So 
I would say the answer, the best answer is probably E. So anyone who answered any one of these is also correct. Um, any of these can be good times to borrow. C is the one that maybe maybe needs the most explaining. Um, when my farm isn't making enough money, well, that probably isn't a great time to borrow. It's probably a hard time to get a loan because it's easier to get a loan when you at least have a little bit of working capital and liquidity. Um, but you might also have a clear plan for getting to how, how to make money. And so there might be situations where you aren't making enough money, but you have a clear plan to grow your business and you might be looking for financing then. Okay. What are lenders looking for? Um, go ahead and answer again, A, B, C, D, or E. Is it A, someone who doesn't really need a loan? B, someone who can pay back a loan? C, a business they can invest in or build a long-term relationship? Or D, someone who understands and knows their business well? Or E, all of the above? So I see a lot of different answers here. That's interesting. Um, so really the, an the answer is E, all of the above. So anyone who answered any of these are, are correct. A is a little bit glib, someone who doesn't really need a loan. You know, often a lender, it, it's easiest to get a loan when, from your lender when you don't really need the loan, and that's just kind of how lending works. When you really need the loan, it's actually hard to get it, which is why it's good to plan ahead. Um, so that is a little bit glib there, but, but it is true in a way. Uh, so I see we have a lot of different answers. So if anyone has any questions about why one of these might be correct or incorrect, then please type it into the chat box. And if not, we can move on. Okay, great. So last question. How could borrowing help me? Invest in a piece of equipment that will increase productivity, allow for expansion or make the operation more efficient, establish credit history, even out monthly fluctuations in cash flow, or help make my farm more profitable, or all of the above. Oh. So I see some all of the above, and yeah, for this one, it's definitely all of the above. So these are some of the reasons that you might, uh, or some of the benefits that you might get from, from borrowing. Okay, so that is the end um, of the slides I have, and we have plenty of time for questions it looks like. So um, if folks have other questions that they want to take time to ask, um, please feel free, or resources they want to share. Um, I also, if, if there aren't any questions, we also could take some time and look at the CARAT Project website and I can show you some of the resources. Senator, thank you very much. This has been a great, very informative presentation. Um, and I'm sure we have a few questions here. And I thought I would just kick that off. Um, many of the new farmers that I work with in my position are pretty hesitant um, about going into debt for their business and you know they are startups and um, obviously when you're getting a business going those first five years um, you know can be pretty tricky um, however you know also in our program we've seen that people who do capitalize early tend to um, become more efficient more quickly and um, you know, and re reap the benefits of that as far as um, gaining profitability sooner. And I'm just wondering, you know, how would you um, advise, you know, someone who might be hesitant about getting their first farm loan um, as far as how they can feel, uh, you know, more confident or comfortable that um, they're not going to be taking on too much debt or getting their business into, a, you know, a difficult situation? Right, that's a good question. Um, so, you know, it all comes back to cash flow planning, I think. I, I, it also comes back to your experience 
um, in the industry. And I think being able to rely on your own sense of what is really going to move your efficiency forward. Do you have the experience to know um, and have you done the planning to know if I buy this piece of equipment, it's really the right investment for me and it's going to move my efficiency forward this way? Or if, if I buy this piece of equipment, it's not going to necessarily have the same impact and in what order should I make my investments on the farm? And so I think I, I think that having an aversion to debt is a fairly healthy place to be, but at the same time, um, I think you're right that for a lot of operations that you do you do want to make the investments that are going to allow you to grow and become more efficient. So that is definitely true. Um, and I think, you know, we spend a lot of time with our borrowers uh, working on cash flow planning and make sure that those cash flow plans are grounded um, and that they've thought of everything that they can possibly think of and make mistakes on paper ahead of time so that they know what the outcome is for that uh, potential uh, investment. I, I've i been working with a farmer who is thinking of adding to her dairy and she is looking at a couple of different options and she was looking at you know what value-added product would I want to make? Would I want to make yogurt? Would I want to make aged cheese? Or would I want to make butter? Um, and you know if any of your dairy farmers you might know you know how much milk each one of those different product takes and which one is kind of a shorter uh, product to get up and running and which one also uh, is, is more profitable. So we looked at that question with her and I think eventually she probably will have an aged cheese pro product, but that's not what we need her early cash flow plans around. What we need her early cash flow plans around for yogurt because she had a co-packer for the yogurt and she could easily make more short-term cash flow on the yogurt. And we only figured that out by going through the numbers. And then by having that, that uh, yogurt business going and by selling her milk and yogurt, then she could take time and develop an aged cheese product. But since it takes more time to, to develop it and then test it and then see if you like it, it just it's a longer a longer frame, so a longer time frame. So it made sense after doing the numbers to start to think about borrowing for the yogurt business first and to make her business planning and cash flow planning around that. And so that's just an example of where if you do kind of work through the numbers, you can figure out uh, how to set up your business or maybe add different enterprises and invest in them in, in an order that makes sense um, in terms of being able to help with cash flow rather than hurt cash flow. Because if you just went into aged cheese first, of course, it would be sitting on the shelf and then you'd have to wait months to test it and then you would, you would, you may or may not have a product that you were ready to move forward with. So it's, that's just one example, but um, I do encourage, I do encourage folks to reach out. I know there's a lot of good resources in New York, a lot of folks that you can work with at UVM, but you can also contact us. Um, to do that kind of planning when you're thinking, you know, should I do this enterprise or this enterprise? And how would my, you know, labor versus equipment trade-off be if I invested in this equipment setup versus this one? And those are the kind of questions that um, are really good to think about in your operation. That's, that's really great. Um, that was a great answer. Thanks. And it looks like Lori just asked a question about um, what are the typical loan lengths for CARAT project loans? Um, the loan lengths for our loans are based on the purpose of the loan. So across our funds, they're up to seven years. Um, it's a little different in each fund. But so if you if you needed an operating loan or you needed something that was a smaller piece of equipment, your loan might be one year or two years. And if you needed a much larger loan, your loan might be seven years. So it's based on the amount and the purpose and what makes sense um, for that. All right, any other questions out there? Looks like we are um, looks like we are good. So uh, 
I want to thank everyone for joining us, and um, especially uh, Vanessa, thank you so much for sharing this information. And um, just so you all know, this webinar uh, has been recorded, and it will be up on our website. Um,